What are these red dots? Karapika hunched over the city map you laid out across the coffee table, since it was larger than your actual kitchen table. They're all the crime locations from the last 12 months that were classified as taking place under unusual circumstances. You had taken care to mark them in the prettiest scarlet marker you owned. Just to be cute. Unusual. High stakes disappearances, no traces of evidence, that sort of thing. Crime's too clean to not be Nen based. You shrugged and he nodded. What do you think? I think conspiracy theorists would tip their hats to you. <laughs> you enjoyed the way Kurapika always deadpanned his jokes. His dexterous fingers trailed across the parchment, then slowed to a halt on the northeast side of the city. There's a heavier concentration of dots here. Maybe close to a hideout or something? That's just what I was thinking. It might be a good place to start, but... You glanced over to the calendar on the wall. We definitely won't have time to investigate every lead, so we've got to make each one count. It was just a little over a month out from the auction. The idea was to incapacitate as many of the troop members as possible before their final attack by picking them off one by one, then instigating an ambush by warning influential rival gangs of their plans, effectively wiping out the remainder in one fell swoop. Finally, amidst the gunfire and chaos, you and Karapika would abscond with all the Scarlet Eyes to be auctioned. Surely they wouldn't miss those items, considering every other valuable will have been saved by your collective interventions. It seemed lofty and improbable, but it was the best basic plan you had for now. We also need to pencil in some time for training. He curled a thoughtful finger to his mouth, mental calculator churning. We should really familiarize ourselves with each other's abilities. If you're curious, you could just ask. You smirked, and he returned it. You're an emitter, aren't you? What gave you that idea? During the fourth phase, you emitted your nen into my canteen when you drank from it, didn't you? His tone was only mildly accusatory. That's why I slept so deeply and woke up disoriented in the morning and it's likely the reason I was so quick to answer your questions. It did seem like I was in control of the conversation, didn't it? You emphasized with a wink, and the realization flickered across his eyes. Oh, so you're a manipulator. Bingo. Excellent, he exclaimed, as if his mind was already swimming with ideas on how to use that to his advantage. Karapika had built his abilities for one sole purpose, and these strict conditions made it so that while killing spiders would be easy, gathering information would prove to be a daunting challenge. Having procured a means to pull outcomes in his favor was a relief for him, and he was grateful for the extra edge you provided. I did make you sleep, Karapika. But believe it or not, I didn't make you tell me anything. He narrowed his eyes suspiciously. I barely had the basics of Nen down at the time. I thought I was an emitter too, honestly. So you see, there's no way I could have given you a complex directive that would make you do my bidding. He pressed his lips into a flat line skeptically and you laughed. <laughs> Is it really so hard to believe that you made a friend that quickly? I bet Gon does it all the time. Everywhere he goes, I'd wager. I suppose you have no reason for lying. So I'm inclined to believe you. But that sort of thing doesn't happen to me often. I'd say four times in the course of a few days could be called often. You grinned, referring to the bonds he made with you and the others during the exam. I suppose you're right. He smiled warmly, before his visage was overcome with curiosity once more. So tell me more about your Nen abilities. Well, you had a lot to catch him up on. Originally, the two of you had arranged to meet sooner. Months sooner, actually but complications fell in your wake. Namely, the most crucial and unspoken part of the Hunter exam. You wanted to train alongside him, but the Hunter Association had other plans for your development. Truth be told, you were careless of your surroundings after returning from the Zoldic estate. Who would dare to hunt a hunter, right? Perhaps it was this flawed manner of thinking which spurred the events to follow. The blunt object struck fast. A soaring feat considering its monumental size, 
and the stranger wielding it vanished behind a cloud of dense smoke. Mercy must not have been a relevant player here. Not by any stretch of the imagination. Because it wasn't until after the ruthless ass-kicking that the burly assailant chose to inform you that he wasn't just a mere agent of chaos like you believed, but was, in fact, a hunter sent to train you. Thrashings became the daily routine henceforward, until you were able to hold your own against him. Unfortunately, the power gap between you proved too great, and it was a pure act of desperation that fueled the birth of your Nen ability. The thick-set woods of the city park was where his training took place, where you could battle without the interference or notice of civilian bystanders. Two months in, and you had yet to land a single blow on the user. Not when you were completely occupied by his overwhelming number of smoke dolls. They were silent, weightless, leaving no clues as to their whereabouts as they bounced off branches, appearing and disappearing at will. In a heated frenzy of despair and hopelessness, you threw out your N as wide as it could go, trying to find a pattern in their attack. It was then that something peculiar caught your attention. Surrounding each one of his apparitions was a group of mosquitoes. The heat seemed to draw them in masses. If only they would distract him a little bit, you wished. Just one small opening is all I need. As if the heavens heard your plea, your end snapped back inward. But by some inexplicable phenomenon, you retained total awareness of the location of every tiny blood-sucking insect you had just seen. In an instant they gathered, swimming through the air like a school of organized fish. Your instructor blinked in surprise, though you couldn't see it behind his dark sunglasses. He sucked in a lungful from his oversized pipe, an item that had become a frequent visitor in your nightmares as of late, and began to blow a wall of protection from the barrage of swarming creatures. Reflexively, you enhanced the aura around one, and fired it through the vapor before it turned solid opaque. Upon making contact with his skin, the soot-colored warriors stood still, then gradually vanished as the night air cut through them. The effect only lasted for around thirty seconds, but it was enough to earn you one good punch and a smile from your teacher. As it turns out, that smile was a sadistic one. For the very next evening, you began an entirely new trial by fire. There was one glaring flaw with your newfound ability, and he made sure to exploit it. You had only just activated your Ren when a massive barrier of smoke encased the two of you in a small, limited space. How could you use your ability now, when all access to your weapons was completely severed? He seriously did that right after you learned a new ability? Karapika scoffed and interrupted your tale appalled by the level of unnecessary cruelty. Before you could even train it? He's a tough love kind of guy, that's for sure. Anyone who heard your six-month-long tale of woe likely wouldn't believe it. But your teacher was actually compassionate in nature. I had a bit more autonomy in my experience. He sighed the frustration out and returned his attention to you. <sighs> so what did you do? I managed to dodge for a while to buy some time. I had become a lot faster by this point. As I moved, I tried emitting my Nen, shedding it like scales almost. The battle was stirring up the underbrush, so I was able to hide flecks of my aura under some dead leaves where he wouldn't notice. Somehow his wall of smoke was hard and impenetrable as stone. I would know. I got smacked into it more than once. But during all this, the aura beneath the leaves was taking shape. It was my first time attempting to conjure, so it took a lot of time and focus. Then finally, I was able to launch my counterattack. So did you win? Eh, well, was my attack fast enough? No. But he was put off by my weird half-formed conjurations long enough for me to get a good hit in. What did they look like? The combination of me being an inexperienced conjurer mixed with the fact that I wasn't able to actually see them when they were forming, it came out looking more like a syringe than a mosquito. But it had wings and eyes. It was unsettling, to say the least. <laughs> the blonde laughed openly at this. But at least it gave me inspiration for a different ability. So there's that. Wait, so clarify for me one more time. 
What exactly happened to make your teacher's smoke puppet stop that first time? That was my queen mosquito. I used emission to alter its properties and make it a faster and more durable projectile. If the opponent is struck by it, their net is nullified, and they're forced into a state of zetsu for one hour. It can't be reversed. Wow, that's incredibly powerful. What's the condition? I can be hit by it as well. Oh. Yeah, so basically if the enemy deflects it and I get hit, it's an instant death sentence for me. That's the cost. I see. As for my mutant conjurations... You smiled playfully. They serve a purpose as well. Similar to my Queen Mosquito, these ones require a mission. However, if someone gets hit by this, I can suck Aura right out of them. So you can use their abilities? Karapika's eyes widened and he leaned forward in his seat. That sounds like a specialist power. Oh, uh, no. It's not that cool, I guess. You scratched your neck in embarrassment and averted his intense stare. It's just raw aura for me to use at my disposal. Like currency, if you will. The stipulation being, the stolen aura automatically flows to the last person to touch it with their nen. If I accidentally bank it from one enemy to the other, the first enemy receives his aura instead of me. So I have to use it carefully. Fascinating. I created these abilities to use in the event that we get ambushed and have to fight multiple opponents at once. He beamed at you. May I see one? Hmm. He didn't specify, but you knew which one was chafing his curiosity. Aura Drain activated in the palm of your hand, and Karapika quirked his head at it. He immediately understood what made your instructor waver. The creature was bizarre, resembling a fat, plump syringe with googly eyes. You know, I can't speak for the rest of the world, but I've never seen someone conjure something that doesn't already exist in some form. Needles, stabbing weapons, dwelling spaces. Only someone as creative as you could design a mosquito syringe. He was clearly some amalgamation of transfixed and amused. I should teach the technique to new hunters. Like an art class. <laughs> I'd take it. I'll call it Blind Conjuration. The window to your soul. You spread your hands across the air theatrically. On second thought, I think I want my money back. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, though, I never thought I'd control mosquitoes of all things. You grimaced lightly at your bastardized excuse for a conjuration before letting it vanish. It's kind of gross, don't you think? No, not at all. There's a plethora of possibilities. With that many facets of aura moving all at once, the patterns you can use to swarm your opponent are endless. He lifted an analytical finger. Imagine if Hisoka had twenty decks of cards. The challenger would be overrun almost instantly. Not to mention, Ponzu's bees were quite formidable on their own. Hmm, I guess that's true. So, when you're not using emission, what else can you do with them? No way! You crossed your arms and sat back on your heels. Enough about me! It's your turn to share. Tell me your abilities.